We began this devoted series back on the 30th of August 2020 and we did that online. I never imagined that we'd be delivering its conclusion today, the 18th of July, also online. But here we are. And we've spent just short of 11 months looking at what it means to be devoted to the Apostles' teaching and to fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Including this one, there have been a total of 31 messages in this series. And as we come to this final message, um, I come with a question. So what? So what? We've had 31 sermons over 11 months on the subject of understanding what it means to be devoted and it's been great. There is a sense that we have achieved something. We have completed another series. Yay! So what? So what was the real outcome? And does that outcome lead to something else? What's next? This series uh, has to be more than, the outcome has to be more than just filing another series in the archives, patting ourselves on the back and saying, job well done, and then moving on to the next thing. It has to be more than that. This series started with a clear revelation from the Lord about in this season, i.e. this season of uh, lockdown and pandemic, was not about going larger, but about going deeper. As a reminder, at the next leadership conference at the end of July 2020, Alan Scott said, expect a revolution of consecration and a devotion towards holiness. Sam Monk said, build a well rather than a fence. Fences keep people in and out, but wells draw people to life and you have to dig deep to get to the life-giving water. Kirsty Wimber said it's not about the larger church, but it's about the deeper church. And Pastor Simon Taylor, who shared with us last week, after that conference in July 2020, witnessed something in his spirit about this season, this, this time of um, being in our homes and, and lockdown and isolation, something about going deeper. He mentioned Joshua 3.5, a verse that we spoke of quite a lot at the beginning of the series, where it just says, where Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow, the Lord will do amazing things among you. There is something about what we need to do today that impacts on what God will do tomorrow. So, as Acts 2 verse 42 says that the early church devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer, we too have spent 11 months understanding more about what it means to be devoted to these same four areas. And in each of these four areas, we have seen a common theme, the drive to Jesus, the means to know him more as we communicate with him in prayer, the way that we can appreciate and apply to our lives what he has done for us as we continue to remember him 
and the ability to learn more about him through the apostles' teaching and, of course, through one another as we have true fellowship with each other. And our prayer is that through this series you have not just understood more about what it means to be devoted to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer, but that you have, but that as you have devoted yourself to these four pillars of the church, you have come to know Jesus better. You have a greater desire to know him even more, that you are deeper people than you were 11 months ago, with a greater devotion to Jesus than you had 11 months ago. It's a bit of an old modern song, but the words kind of hit the spot for me in relation to what this series has all been about. The song is, this is my desire to honour you. Lord, with all of my heart, I worship you. All that is within me, I give you praise. All that I adore is in you. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment that I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me because it's all about Jesus. It's all about him and our love for him and our passion for him to be made known, not only in our own lives, but in the lives of those around us. So what's next? What has this series or where has this series taken us and where is it leading us? It leads us to, I believe, uh, Isaiah chapter 60 and verses 1 to 3. Let's read them, shall we? And this is the prophet Isaiah seeing things ahead of his time. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, Darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. There are a few things that I just want to talk about in relation to these verses that I sense are for us in terms of what's next. And the first thing is that Isaiah is actually speaking to us, to the church. You know, we all understand that God has a plan, but we need to also understand that we are his plan, the church, his people. And the first uh, thing that he says to us is arise and shine. You know, that arise is, tells us, in other words, you know, get up, stand to your feet. Don't shrink back in fear. Why? Because our light has come. Jesus, the light of the world, has come to us. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon us because he is ascended and he is risen and ascended because Jesus has come the glory of the Lord rises upon each one of us for as Paul says to the Ephesians in chapter 1 verse 12 that we who put our hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory Back to Isaiah 60, you know that word uh, shine in the Hebrew, it means to glow, to radiate, to be the break of day or the break of dawn. It speaks to us in a moment that can seem so bleak. And that word darkness in verse 2 of Isaiah uh, 60, that darkness that 
covers the earth. In Hebrew, that means misery and death and ignorance and sorrow and wickedness and unrighteousness. And we can see it. There is misery, there is death, there is ignorance, there is sorrow, there is wickedness and there is unrighteousness that covers the earth. And then it says that gross darkness or thick darkness is over the peoples, meaning a cloudiness of gloom. The prophet Isaiah foresaw this darkness and gross darkness that would be over the earth and the peoples. And in our spirits, we affirm this because this is the world that we live in. We're not through the pandemic yet. There is still a little bit to go while things are opening up. We're not out of the woods yet. And in this misery, in this um, in all this kind of darkness, it's this when the prophet says, in that context, this is the time, this is the moment for the people of God to arise and to shine. Remember that word shine in the Hebrew means to glow, to radiate, to be the break of dawn or the break of day. And in that misery and death and ignorance and sorrow and wickedness and darkness, that covers the earth and in that cloudiness of gloom that covers the people the church of Jesus Christ is to be the break of dawn is to be the break of day what a picture of the church what a picture the people of God are to be to arise and to shine in my devotional time I had been listening to the book of Job and I heard a couple of uh, wonderful verses that I'd not really picked up before um, and they're in Job chapter 38 and verses 12 and 13 where God is questioning Job and God says to Job have you ever given orders to the morning or shown or shown the dawn its place that it might take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it. Again, what a beautiful picture concerning the break of dawn and in the context of what we have been talking about in Isaiah 60, we have again this image of God commanding the dawn to break, to arise and shine that it might take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it. Isn't that a great picture for us to grasp? Anyone who has watched the dawn break will understand the image. The darkness begins to evaporate. The light grows even stronger until there is no darkness remaining. I love the fact that in Genesis chapter 1, where God says that there was an evening and a morning, the first day, the second day, the third day, and so on. Always the morning comes after the evening. Always the light after the darkness. What a picture for us to grasp as a church, to be the break of day or the break of dawn. The light cannot be stopped Hallelujah. But also what a challenge for us to be that break of day or break of dawn as God commands us. We are to arise and to shine, to be the break of dawn that takes the earth by the edges, to shake the wicked out of it. How? By shining brightly in order that people will be drawn to the light, drawn to Jesus. So let that hope of a new day radiate from us. Let that hope in Jesus, which shine, may that shine as we bring the light that has come to us, Jesus, to those around us. Let's be those that heed the command of the one who has loved us and given everything for us. 
And through the teaching of the apostles, we have uh, begun to understand what that shining brightly looks like. It's that love for one another that goes beyond just our words, and in, but also into our actions. It's to bring the kingdom of God so that people see the signs that Jesus is truly alive and wonder how they can come to know him. It's to know the truth of our security in Christ and who we are in Christ so that we have the confidence to do what he calls us to do out of who he calls us to be. And to be a people together as one that love what Jesus loves. And it's appropriate at this point to say that God loves all people no matter their colour or race or religion or sexual orientation or gender, there is no place for racism or any other kind of discrimination, including supporting anyone but England in the people of God. We have to love what Jesus loves and Jesus loves people. Why? Well, Jesus loves you and he loves me. To be generous with our money, in our giving to God, in our giving to our brothers and sisters, and in our giving to those who are in need of help. To be people that live with the urgency, knowing that Jesus is coming soon. That's just a, a little picture of what it means to shine brightly in this world. And when we live that way, then the people of this world who do not know this personal relationship uh, with God through Jesus, they will be drawn to this light. That people will be drawn to something better than what this world offers. And what is better is kingdom life, which is the life that we now belong to that we have been brought into. Excuse me. Paul says in Colossians 1 verse 13, For he that is God has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. We have been brought into the kingdom of Jesus. We have been brought in under the rule and reign of the King. Listen to what the Word of God says that we, the church, are. Two Peter, uh, sorry, 1 Peter 2.9 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. Isn't that wonderful? Go on, say it again, Robbie. You are a chosen people a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. Oh, say it again. Let me drink it in. You are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are God's special possession. Oh, hallelujah. It is just so glorious, but it's written not that we just make us feel good, but oh boy, does it make us feel good. Because, But it's there for a reason, and the reason is at the latter part of, of the same verse. 1 Peter 2, 9 goes on to say, That you may declare the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The same people that are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, those same people are to declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful and it is wonderful light. 
as Craig shared with us just a few weeks ago, that that you is not an individual you, but it's a collective you. It's you as in us, as in all of us, as in the church, the people that Jesus is building. Peter continues the same theme in his second letter, 2 Peter 1 verses 3 to 9, that his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who has called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. God has given us everything we need to live for his glory because he desires that his life is manifest through us into this world. We have to move beyond just being satisfied with our faith in Christ to save us, but to let him work in us in ever increasing measure so that love is ultimately expressed more and more. Love towards God, love towards our brothers and sisters in Christ and love towards a world that so desperately needs him. That kind of love is effective and productive. So where are we going next? <laughs> What's beyond this devoted series? Well, the title of the sermon may give you a little cue, um, live a little clue, you know, it's uh, to devotion and beyond. Sorry about that. Where are we going <laughs> is to look at the practical aspects of what it means to outwork our faith in Christ, recognizing that it's from our being, out of our devotion to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to breaking of bread and to prayer, it's out of that devotion that our doing, the practical outworking of our faith comes. And as we do that, more and more our prayer is that our light may become even more brighter like the dawning of a new day as we arise and shine. For it is time to arise and shine. It is time to break into the edges of the darkness, to allow that light to dawn in the lives of those uh, that desperately need this world, where there is so much gloom and where there is sorrow and where there is a, a real grieving of what this pandemic has taken from people. Uh, Rick Warren says there is a tsunami of grief coming as we come out of this, where people have lost so much, this cloudiness of gloom. But this is the time where we can arise and shine. So, in conclusion of the conclusion, we've covered a lot of ground in this series, but it has to be more than just the completion of a series. Our prayer is that you have dug deeper that you've done the work to go deeper in your relationship with Jesus. For, for these topics of uh, prayer, of breaking of bread, of fellowship, of the apostles' teaching, they are all there to help us know Jesus more. May we persevere in these areas so that we can say with Paul, as he wrote to the Philippians in Philippians 3, 8 to 10, that we consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ. Jesus our Lord, that we may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of our own that comes from the law, 
but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. We want to know Christ. That's what this devotion series has been all about. And our prayer is that you have come to know Christ more through it. And if you're like me, that devotion has stirred in you a a fresh, holy discontent for not wanting to be or do like we did before this pandemic started. We don't want to going back to being just billiard balls that bounce off each other on a Sunday morning, but that our life as a church family will move beyond the walls of our church services and into the heart of the communities in which we live and work. Don't misunderstand me. We will still need to have those times together. Call them services if you wish. We will still need them to inspire us and to encourage us as we look to Jesus as Lord. But may we as this church in Inverness, as this people in Inverness, arise and shine into the places that are covered in darkness where thick darkness is over the people. May we be the break of dawn that takes the earth by its edges, that shines into the misery and the death and the ignorance and the sorrow and the wickedness and the unrighteousness that covers the earth and shines into the cloudiness of gloom that is over the people, shines so that they can be rescued from the dominion of darkness and brought into the kingdom of Jesus. We can arise and we can shine by declaring the praises of him who has brought us out of that darkness and into this kingdom of wonderful light. We can make every effort to add to our faith as it's outworked in the practical ways of goodness and knowledge and self-control and perseverance and godliness and mutual affection and love. It can be outworked in ways that are effective and productive in in the work he has commanded us, which is to be that break of dawn. On the day that we conclude this series on devotion and look to arising and shining, to being the break of dawn, we meet for our first in-person service in a long time in a new venue later on today. Is that a coincidence? No. Is God telling us the same thing in a different way? It's time to arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the people's But, but, the Lord rises upon you, upon me, upon you, and his glory appears over you. God has given orders to the morning and shown the dawn its place. That's us that it might take the earth by its edges and shake the wicked out of it. ICF, it's time to come out of our homes. It's time to come out of our comfort zones as we take a hold once more of our verse for the year on this new day, on this new dawn. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. It's all of us. It's one body with many different parts, all valued, all needed to work as one to proclaim his lordship, to arise and shine, to be the break of dawn to this world, to impact and influence Inverness, the Highlands and the world. 
will you come on this journey with us to devotion and beyond. Amen.